Celebrated artworks are so much more than just beautiful pictures. They really reflect the innermost thoughts and characteristics of the artist. Historical talents such as Michelangelo and da Vinci were not only master painters, they were masters of allegory and symbolism as well, and many of their masterpieces contain secret meanings, unsolved riddles, and even hidden images. So here are some of the most intriguing secrets hidden in famous works of art. Number one, the many, many mysteries of the Mona Lisa. Da Vinci's masterpiece at the Louvre in Paris is arguably the most recognizable painting in the world, and there's me picking her nose. Anyway, the painting itself remains an unsolved riddle. A nameless woman with that I just fart a smile on her face. No one knows who she was, who was she to Da Vinci, and if she was really smiling. Other than the obvious mysteries that surrounds this painting, hidden messages and clues continue to be discovered. From da Vinci's initials LV in her right eye to the number 72 marked in the arch of the bridge. Some say the woman was pregnant due to her arms covering her stomach and a veil around her shoulders often worn by Italian Renaissance women who are expecting or have recently delivered. Researchers even discovered another painting lurking beneath the surface, likely an earlier version and possibly a real-life portrait of Lisa del Giocondo, his subject. Why that portrait was painted over? Well, that's yet another mystery. Number 2. Botticelli's Primavera The 1482 long panel painting that hangs in Florence's Uffizi Gallery is another of the better known pieces of Western art. Mythological creatures including Venus, Mercury, and the Three Graces are clearly visible, along with at least 500 species of plants, all of which have already been identified by botanists and include some 190 separate kinds of flowers that are painted with excruciating detail in the garden background itself. Number 3. Jan van Eyck's Hidden Self-Portrait Jan van Eyck's 1434 painting, the Arnolfini Portrait, which now hangs in the National Gallery in London, is a beautiful depiction of a wife and her husband and shows off Eyck's fascination with the effects of light, which is seen in the intricate folds of her dress, the chandelier above their heads, and the spherical mirror that hangs on the opposite wall, reflecting the scene back to the viewers. If you look closely, and possibly with the help of a magnet, Magnifying glass, you can make out two other figures painted in that reflection standing where the viewers presumably would. One is likely the artist himself, with his arms raised as if to greet those looking at the painting. Number four, Picasso's The Old Guitarist. Money ran especially low during Picasso's blue period from 1901 through 1904, so the artist took to repurposing and reusing what supplies he already owned. The Old Guitarist, one of his more haunting and iconic pieces made during that time was actually painted over a previous work. So if you look closely at the man's neck, you can see the obvious outline of a woman's face and figure, the contours of which have become increasingly more apparent due to the fading blue paint. Number 5. A Musical Last Supper The details in Da Vinci's The Last Supper, which depicts Jesus' final meal with his disciples, have been studied and speculated for centuries. One hidden code is said to be found by an information technologist who created an interesting visual effect by overlaying a semi-transparent mirrored version of the painting on top of the original. The result is that two figures that look like Templar knights appear at both ends of the table, while someone who is possibly holding an infant stands next to Jesus' left. Another discovery, which is pretty grim, possibly refers to the end of the world as the sundial positioned over the head of Jesus is said to predict the universal flood in the year 4006. So the end of the world is interesting, but that's like 2,000 years away and it won't really matter to us much. But the next one is really compelling. In 2007, Italian musician Giovanni Maria Palla found that the positions of the loaves of bread and the apostles' hands when read from right to left, which is Da Vinci's own unique writing style, form a 40-second musical composition echoing a requiem. It's very possible Da Vinci did this on purpose as he was an accomplished musician on top of being an artist, inventor, ninja turtle. Number 6. The Creation of Adam Maybe it was just coincidence, but the similarities are simply astonishing. Michelangelo, who was always intrigued by the human anatomy and who was dissecting human corpses at the age of 17 in the church cemetery, uh, Dexter 
Lester much. Anyway, he seemed to have taken inspiration from the human body to paint the creation of Adam. Neuroanatomy experts say the level of detail in the painting shows an accurate and precise depiction of the human brain. From the cerebellum and optic chasm to the pituitary gland and the vertebral artery, the painting is one of the most famous works in the Sistine Chapel, and it seems to have also been a lesson in the brain's anatomy. While some might dismiss this as a coincidence, experts suggest that it would be hard harder to explain that this was not Michelangelo's intention. Even that green sash running down the spinal column follows the path of the vertebral artery perfectly. Number 7. Giving the Pope the Finger The ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, which depicts multiple scenes from the book of Genesis, is considered one of Michelangelo's greatest masterpieces. For centuries, people of all faiths have come to Rome and the Sistine Chapel and just to stare at the ceiling at Michelangelo's work. To most people, it may just be a beautiful vision from the old Testament frescoes painted on wet plaster of the stories of the creation of the universe, Noah's Ark, and Adam and Eve. But this could also be the most famous piece of work where someone is flipping someone else the bird. You see, while Michelangelo spent four years completing the many panels of the work, he was never on good terms with his patron, Pope Julius II, whose aggressive fight for power earned him the nickname the Fearsome Pope. Above the door the Pope would use for entry into the chapel, Michelangelo Angelo painted Julius' likeness on the face of the prophet Zachariah. Over his shoulder, one can see a little angel with his fingers curled in a way to make an obscene gesture known in Italy as giving the fig. Speaking of all these awesome pieces of work, I was in Paris um, early this year. Uh, that's when I went to the Louvre, saw Mona Lisa. Was anybody really underwhelmed by that whole experience? I mean, it's literally like this big and there's lines of people, like a barricade of people, all taking selfies. Well, I did it too, because that's yeah, what you gotta do when you go see the Mona Lisa, take a selfie, pick your nose, whatever. But just the painting itself is so small, it's under like 20,000 layers of protective glass, there's lines of, there's a rope in front of it, it was just, I don't know, I mean, it just didn't really feel like it was something majestic. It didn't really feel like it was like the centerpiece of a museum. I mean, for all we know, Da Vinci might have considered that one of the worst piece of work that he's ever done, and now we're kind of just worshiping it. I mean, if you love it and it speaks to you, great. This is just my opinion. I just found it a little underwhelming. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.